believe in the love I see before me And I still need you to put your hand in mine Cause this journey's long but I am strong And with your faith in me We can shine our light around the world And it will light the darkness Keep the faith, don't let it fade Hope is alive tonight In this life, the weathered many seasons Now, it took me a little while to come to a decision as to what I really was going to talk about tonight. Because, you know, most of my stories are pretty dim and dark. They deal with man's inhumanity to man. But in thinking about these, I suddenly thought about one word, which I think Rotarians have in spades. We have buckets and buckets and buckets of it, and that's courage. Courage to get on with the job and courage to do the things that need to do. Courage is needed by many, many people across this world just to survive on a daily basis. The definition for courage is the quality of mind or spirit that enables a person to face difficulty, danger, pain, etc., without fear to face it with bravery. Now, all humans do have courage to some degree or another, and we are called upon so often to draw on this courage. This is both physical and mental courage. And we all know the courage that, is called, or that gets called from us if we have to go into battle to address a situation of immediate danger or stress. But what of that courage that is needed by so many on a daily basis just to survive? Those fleeing from an untenable situation in Syria, women in cultural situations where they have absolutely no choice of their own, they're owned by men, where there's slavery or just sheer poverty. I think the Rotary Foundation addresses that courage. I think the Rotary Foundation bolsters that courage. It rewards it and makes it possible for people to continue. I want to tell you the story of courage of a woman called Yeri Sally from Burkina Faso. I had the opportunity of meeting her last year. Yeri was circumcised when she was a young girl and she underwent this mutilation because she had no choice, nor was she ever asked. At the age of 14, her father died, and she was then taken out of school and forced to marry a man five times her age. She soon had three children, and when her first husband died, because of the custom of the country, Yeri was again forced to marry the, the brother of her husband. I was so unhappy, Yeri told me. Then she went to an awareness-raising event put on by Rotary International. And finally, finally, she told me, she realized that she could actually understand what it means when somebody says the two words, human rights. She suddenly realized she had human rights. Her words were, I realized suddenly that I finally could wake up and do something. I was able to gather up the money to repay the sum of my dowry and to become free. And my courage to do this, in fact, the knowledge that it was even possible was due to the education, awareness, and legal help that I received from Rotary and from a district grant from the Rotary Foundation. For the first time in my life, I was free and could make my own choices and decisions. Now, this is a story of Africa, but today in our own communities, and I would even venture to say, even among some of us women, 
sitting here in this room. There are those that face life on a daily basis, needing courage to survive and to succeed. Our whole social structure has been slow to change from a very male-dominated society to one of true equality. And I wish I could say something different, but patriarchy is as prevalent around the world as racism and xenophobia is. We can't hide from it, not even here. And it takes great courage to have men change from this model and accept the equality of sexes. It's a fight being fought on all levels, and it sometimes succeeds, and at other times does not. And once again, so proudly, the Rotary Foundation shows no bias to gender whatsoever. In fact, I think the Rotary Foundation, in what it does across the world and the images it projects, shows true and utter equality. Elizabeth Stanton said, the best protection any woman can have is courage. So I'm going to tell you three stories associated with woman or girl's courage. The first one is in my very own community in Vancouver. You may be aware of the organization, I'm sure you have it here in the US as well, and we call it Dress for Success. This provides women a leg up when they want to re-enter the job market after a time spent in poverty or abuse. And standing next to a woman one day, as she looked at herself in a mirror, wearing a new business suit, her hair beautifully styled, her face made up, I saw tears running down her cheeks. And she looked at me and she said, yes. Today, for the first time in 10 years, I see the me that I have always known I am. I no longer see the me the world has had to see over the past 10 years. I could only ima imagine the courage she would need and the fear she had to overcome to reestablish herself in life and in fact to reinvent herself. This program is fully supported by a grant from the Rotary Foundation through our district grants. So a few years back, while doing polio immunization in northern Nigeria, and I mean in the very top of northern, you know, northern part of Nigeria, I was dropped off under a tree with a Rotaractor translator one other Rotarian and the immunization team. And this was after a very dusty, long, long ride in a bumpy, bumpy van along just little tracks in the bush. So this is an area which is frequented by Boko Haram. And I must admit that day I wasn't sure whether I ever was going to survive the day and if anybody would ever find us anyway if, if something was to happen. But the women and children came to us all morning but by the early afternoon, when the women were starting to prepare the evening meal, there were no longer children to immunize. So I took the opportunity to wander through the groups of compounds looking for children to immunize. While doing so, I came across a simple well with a rope and a bucket and little girls aged about 10 or 12, collecting water, filling containers, and then disappearing into the bush with their water. And the village headman told me that we were working in only one small area of the village complex, but the village was very extended, and in fact, there was an arm of the village which was about two kilometers away on the one side, and another one about three kilometers away, and this was the only well. Those settlements had no water. So I got back to the tree, and I asked him what it costs to dig a simple well like that. And that night when I got back to my hotel, I sat down and I took out my spending money and my little travel emergency fund and I, I thought my roommate was looking at me rather oddly, what on earth am I doing? Because I took all these dollar bills and I laid them across the bed like this and I started counting. 
And you know, the realization was that I had enough money, which was my pin money, to build not one well, but two wells, and to rehabilitate that well. And 10 months later, I had the photos of the Canadian wells in those two settlements. And every time I look at those pictures, I remember how little it took to make a difference. I remember the sight of those little girls with their dusty bare feet, their buckets, the containers on their heads, and their strong little backs. As they not only faced the courage their walk home needed, because it was through this dangerous bush, but also the courage they needed to face the life that lay ahead of them. And today, we are working with the Rotary Foundation to bring a full clean water system to these three settlements, together with a school and a health clinic. And using the power of the foundation, we have moved way beyond my small stash of spending money and are really going to change the lives of those little girls and their families. Now Bono from the band U2 says, the circumstance of our birth should not dictate whether we live or die, whether we have equal opportunity or not, whether we sleep in poverty or not. You know, a few years back I was with a team of social workers and community nurses visiting an AIDS clinic in one of the most horrific communities that I know. This is one of the big squatters camps just outside of Johannesburg. It's a place called Zanspreit, and if any of you have been to Johannesburg in South Africa, you have all seen this enormous, enormous hole of horrors. These are shacks that are made out of bits of cardboard, sticks, little bits of corrugated iron. There are more than half a million people living there. They do not have running water, they do not have sanitation, and they have absolutely no future. Most are unemployed, and they have no access to either education or health services. There are many, many children. Always many, many children. That morning, a young girl came running up to me, and she thrust this brand new baby into my arms, and she asked me to take her baby, please to take her baby and make him mine. I looked at her and I said, why would you want me to do this? Why would you give your baby away? Her reply was, I am 14 years old. I have no education. I am a prostitute and I am HIV positive. What future is there for my baby? Fortunately, we had those social workers and Rotary with us. And they literally scooped her and the baby up and today she lives in a foster home. She goes to school and has the medical attention she needs. But best of all, her baby is safe. Her name is Elizabeth. I will never forget because my oldest daughter's name is Elizabeth. So it was like having Elizabeth reborn. And you know what? She's a remarkable young woman who, despite being through so much in her life, has graduated from high school. And this year, on a Rotary scholarship, is attending university to become a social worker. So, yeah. <laughs> Elizabeth has proved something which most of us know. When you empower a girl, you empower the world. The more confident and loved a girl feels, the more likely she'll make good decisions that help her succeed. And it's not just the individual and the families who, are, who benefit from this, but the whole community is positively affected when a girl makes smart choices. But when we talk about courage, we have to acknowledge one man who stands out above many for having the courage to remain a true humanitarian, morally and ethically uncompromised, courageous beyond compare. Despite every injustice that came his way, he remained true, and that is Nelson Mandela.
Nelson Mandela said in his long walk to freedom, I have walked that long road to freedom. I tried not to falter. I have made missteps along the way, but I have discovered the secret that after climbing a great hill, one only finds that there are many more great hills to climb. I have taken a moment here to rest, to look back on the distance that I have come, to enjoy this beautiful vista that surrounds me. But I can only rest for a moment, for with freedom comes responsibility. And I dare not linger, for my long walk is not ended. He never wavered from having the courage to make a difference and then doing it. And in my mind, this is truly what it is our duty as Rotarians to do. Our walk to bring peace and equality to the world is never over until the job is done. Our task to eradicate violence and injustice against women and men in any form is never done. We must continue to understand that a woman's rights is basic human rights. We know what needs to be done and now must do it. So walking our road to freedom ultimately is what makes us an effective human being. So together, both inside and outside of our communities, we must be there to offer all of humanity equal respect and opportunity so that they can walk their freedom walk and have their dreams come true. There should be no reason why any man, woman, or child cannot have every opportunity to reach their full potential. And it's up to us to have the courage to work to bring to the world what it really needs, peace, equality, and opportunity for all. Each one of us needs to draw on our courage to make the changes needed. Each one of us can, and you know what? Each one of us will. Our Rotary Foundation makes it possible for us to do, as you heard earlier, extraordinary things. We have this mighty, mighty organization that stands with us. And when I say thank you to every single one of you sitting here tonight for your incredible generosity, the fact that you have changed lives, the fact there are, are many in this world that are going to bed tonight in shelter with a full tummy, knowing they're going to be educated tomorrow, having had access to clean water because of you, because of your donations, you will never see their faces. You will never know them. I have met many of them. And every time they say, thank you. So on behalf of them who are standing here beside me, I thank you. Thank you for what you are doing. And thank you for what you are still going to do. And may you all now walk in peace as you so courageously go forward. Thank you. She flew all the way in from Vancouver, Canada to be with us tonight. Rotary International Director Dean Roars. Don't let it fade. Hope is alive tonight. In this life, we weathered many seasons. Carry